I mean, really, guys, let's ask ourselves this. Are we more powerful in relationship or less powerful? Is it better for the human species for us to be taking care of each other? We know statistically that men don't live as long after divorce. Blessings and blessings, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about love and how powerful it is when it chooses us in the form of relationship. Now, I was reading this book that I read a million years ago called The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. And uh, on page 11, which for my spiritual people would be a divine number, it says, Then Alamitra, speak to us of love. And I'm going to be skipping around here because this is just mind-blowingly beautiful. It says, for even as love crowns you, so shall he crucify you. Even as she is for your growth, so is she for your pruning. Even as he ascends to your height and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun, so shall she descend to your roots and shake them in their clinging to the earth. But if in fear you would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure, then it is better for you that you cover your nakedness and pass out of love's threshing floor into the seasonless world where you shall laugh, but not all of your laughter and weep, but not all of your tears. Ladies, gentlemen, and gender non-binary beautiful souls, this is some pure heat. You see, this last line wraps it up and sums it up. And think not, you can direct the course of love. For love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Y'all, this is so much heat on so many levels because so many of us have been trying to control relationships control them in such a way that we don't get hurt but what if getting hurt and being pruned and being shaken to our roots and caressed at the top of our leaves all in the wind what if all of that is a part of the design of relationships what if the very thing that you're trying to avoid is the thing that is the key the 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 ignition that the that starts the engine of growth beyond your current understanding. What if having your heart broken fixes your vision and your vision being fixed and refocused opens up a career, a baby, a trip, a dog, a love? Like what What if this stuff isn't a mistake? What if you're right where you're supposed to be and the only issue that you're currently having is the issue you're making up in your head that's translating off and out of your head into your relationship where you think something's wrong. What if nothing's wrong? What if you're right where you're supposed to be? What if the resistance you have or the commentary or the resentment that you have for your current partner is just a bunch of social and historical programming? What if it's a construct that was handed to you, carefully handed to you to destroy relationships? I mean, really, guys, let's ask ourselves this. Are we more powerful in relationship or less powerful? Is it better for the human species for us to be taking care of each other? We know statistically that men don't live as long after divorce. In order for us to actually thrive, we need each other. You know, I, I got this very early and then I forgot. And I went through a very dark period in my relationship with Alexi where I was resenting her because the what I thought marriage was supposed to be was not happening. And, you know, there's... This line here is really cool because this is exactly what happened to me. I'm going to go back to it for a second because I want you guys to really, like, let this land by way of my story. For even as love crowns you, so shall it crucify you. For even as it is for your growth, it is also for your pruning. This is the one. So I thought, cool, for my growth, yes. But growth, I didn't realize, was packaged in something that was ugly, and that I had been trying to ignore my whole life. You see, I grew up in a scenario where I became a out-of-the-way kid. Children, as children, all of us adapt. We figure out ways to uh, fit in to our household so that we receive more love and attention or so that we receive less attention and don't add stress or pain to ourselves. And I adapted in the way of becoming an out-of-the-way kid. I was 
very much the like, oh, I have no needs. It's all good. You guys take care of you. You're stressed out. You're trying to figure out these relationships and money and all this stuff. Don't worry about me. I'll be good. And through that process, I wore that mask for so long that I didn't know who I was without it. Fast forward to me meeting this beautiful powerhouse woman who's now my wife. And I expected her to meet my needs without me ever asking for my needs. I expected her to, in some ways, fill my cup. And, and the, the story I had going was that I, I, can, I can fill most of my cup, but you're, you're supposed to fill the rest. If you don't, and if you don't take care of me, meaning sidestep your adaptations as a child, sidestep your traumas, sidestep all the stuff you've been there. If you don't push your stuff to the side and make me feel better, then I don't know if I want this. Now, it wasn't that direct at first. You know what I thought? You know what I did? I thought to myself, if I just wash the dishes more, if I just massage her more, if I just tell her I love her more, if I just perform better, she'll finally get what I need and then fill my cup. Now, the problem with this is it's a bottomless pit. No one could ever fill that cup for me. No one can ever fill that cup for you. If you truly truly want to experience life in all of its beauty and magic you have to fill your own cup and that can be one of the most challenging things ever it is in some ways the most important thing to do on the entire planet because everything else is tied to whether i believe i have the power where is the locus of power is it in a in in, in a person is it in a, a bank account? Is it in a car? Where's the locus of power? Because if the locus of power is from within, then I can do something about it. We always ask for big lives, but are we willing to face and be with big challenges? And some of the biggest challenges are not out there. It's here. As above, so below. As within, so without. For a good while, we thought that self-love was bubble baths and selfies. The truth is, is you could take bubble baths and selfies and still hate yourself. I believe that toxic shame is the culprit for most of the destruction that most of us experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And what's beautiful about even me talking about this is I know it firsthand. And this is firsthand experience. This is not philosophy. I don't have any notes here. I'm speaking straight truth from my heart, from my experience. And then I've coached thousands of other people, helping them unearth and get actually free. I used to call myself a personal freedom coach. You know why I did that? Because personal freedom is more important than anything else on the planet. When you taste it and feel it and it reverberates and you walk around in it, some of you have done molly, some of you have done mushrooms, some of you have done certain drugs or, or medicines, and you felt that, that moment where you feel invincible. You felt that moment where you feel so grounded and so landed in your body that you're in the pocket and you know that love is all there is was and ever will be and there's nothing to do nothing to say nowhere to go because god is here now you feel it you operate from it you breathe it now what if you could do that daily without the medicines guys i'm not tooting my horn here but that's i i feel that often i promise you i've worked on it this didn't just happen overnight but the invitation for all of us is to understand that everything is relationship. Relationship is a portal into oneself. Noticing where you contract, noticing where you resent, noticing where you self-judge and judge others is a portal, an opening to your own divinity. So if love chooses you by way of relationship romantically, you lean in, not out. A lot of people after the divorce, after the breakup, they realize in hindsight what else was available for them, but they weren't, mm, they couldn't see it at that time. Hear this, let this one land for you. Whether it's your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your ex-roommate, or your current wife or partner in any sense of the word, hear me. They are a portal. They are an invitation for you to be in, to, 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 for you to stop self-abandoning. See, see, we think it's either or. It's either I self-abandon and stay with you, or I own my power and get rid of you. There's so much gray. There's so much uh, room for expansion, so much room for 
optimization of the human experience. So blessings and blessings, beautiful souls. If this reached your heart in any single way, I ask that you share this. I'm getting real connected and committed to getting this message everywhere. You are a part of my family and my team. If there's a human on the planet you think would receive value from this, please find that share button and go send it to them right now. Have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed, and amazing day. I love you so much.